Hi, I'm Lisa with Lisa Boone Designs. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm making over an old vintage side table that I was given. It sat outside soaking in rain and I am so encouraged by how it's already turning out. Join me on the journey to see how I finish this piece of beautiful furniture. My husband brought home this table and I didn't know about it for a couple of days and he just threw it outside beside my building. My building is full, but he could have put it in my enclosed trailer and he didn't. So it got pretty messed up just sitting out there. It poured for three days and the top layers of the veneer of the center part of the table were coming off. The varnish was cracking. Um, and so I wasn't really sure if I could salvage the top, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm really impressed on how it turned out. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, go ahead and comment below and let me know what you think or if you have any questions. If you're looking for the products that I use today, you can go to my website, lisaboondesigns.com. The links are in the description. I love using this carbide scraper. I purchased it at Lowe's. I'll put the link in the description. It just helps get some varnish and some stain off before you have to sand. And as you can see here, especially around the edges, it was really puffed up. So I really did have to sand it really, really well and get that to level out a little bit. I love to use this stripper. I also purchased this at Lowe's and this is one of my chip brushes that I have available on my website. They're really sturdy. You could probably use a really cheap one um, that you can get at Lowe's, but you can reuse them. You'd be surprised if you're gonna be stripping. And I just pour it all over the table and let it sit there for 15 minutes and then you can scrape it off. After I've applied all of the stripper, I go ahead and I put saran wrap all over it and it just helps for that stripper to really get in there and work and not dry out. After I test my little spot and I know that it's working, I go ahead and I take the saran wrap off and use my, my putty knife to go ahead and scrape off the varnish. I am using a metal one and you should really be careful not to scratch your wood. It's probably better to use a plastic spatula putty knife. And I try to get in all of the little grooves and this really came off super easy. The next thing I like to do is get my brass brush and it really does help to get all of the little crevices, especially along the ridges and it works really, really well. There were just a few little spaces and areas where I needed a little bit more stripper, especially where the carvings were. And so I just applied that and removed it with the brush and it came right up. Next, I grab my paint thinner or mineral spirits with a steel wool. And I also like to use my Brillo brush. Sometimes I use a rag and I just apply it all over the surface of where I had the stripper. It deactivates it and it also helps to remove any last pieces of varnish or stain that are on there. And I find that this, the combination of all of this works really well to help you have a nice surface to work off of. I cleaned the rest of the furniture with a mixture of vinegar, water, and Blue Dawn that I put in my power wash sprayer and it cleans it up really, really well. I always like to use a white rag because it'll tell me if I need to keep cleaning or if it's going to be a bleeder. And so I highly recommend cleaning with a white rag. 
and make sure to use your nail and really get into all of the crevices because there's usually a lot of dirt there. I decided that I wanted to decoupage the top of the table directly onto the wood. Normally I pre-paint my wood into a white or light color, but because this wood was really light, I decided to go ahead and decoupage it. However, the wind started blowing the moment that I pulled out my paper. It'd been a beautiful morning, no wind, and as immediately the wind came. And I do not recommend decoupaging and trying to dry fit paper and cut paper when it's extremely windy. But only me. I did this and I did it on a live on Facebook. But that's okay. I cut it a little bit too short and it still worked out great. I go ahead and I decoupage my paper using DIY Paints Liquid Patina. I always prefer to decoupage my paper in sections and so I start with the top, wherever the top is. I lay down my patina and then I apply my paper. Now because it was windy, I had a little bit of a struggle, but I eventually get there and I apply it and I like to lay it down using saran wrap. You could also use the IOD brayer or any brayer. Uh, you just typically don't want to use your hands, especially if you're hot and sweaty because the paper gets wet and you can tear the paper very easily. My number one tip is to just take your time when you're decoupaging. No matter if it's decoupage paper, napkins, or whatever you're going to use, go ahead and do it slowly, line it up, and then the rest just kind of falls into place. There's no such thing as perfect, so don't try for perfection. Only God is perfect. But we can just do a really good job and make it look good. If you get wrinkles, it's okay. You could always sand it with a fine sanding sponge or you could um, play it up, use wax to emphasize it, or you could cover it with paint. There's so many things that you can do to make it your own and make it unique, but I think struggling uh, to try to get it perfect sometimes is more frustrating than what it's worth. So I don't go for perfection, I do go for pretty. And I usually love the way my decoupage turns out. Now the paper is 18 pound paper. I do have some on my website. And as you can see, I was able to pull it up. You can't do that with napkins or, or anything that's sheer tissue. But these have a really good weight and I was able to make it work. Just be careful with the paper because like I said, once it's wet, it is fragile. Once I get my first area down, then I go ahead and I pull it back and I do a section at a time getting really good coverage using my saran wrap and I work in sections from the middle out so that I can get any bubbles. That's the main thing. Don't have any bubbles or air pockets. If you do, you could. that's still fixable too. You could go ahead and pop it and put a little bit of um, glue or whatever you're using the decoupage medium um, to get it in there and adhered but my goal is always no air pockets. I took a little bit of weathered wood that was in the bottom of my jar, added some water because it was pretty thick, and I created a wash. And I'm using my Klingon brush. All of my Klingon brushes are available on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. You can go to the description. All of my links are right there. And I'm using one of the round brushes. They work so great. I just make sure that you put your brush in water when you're using any of the patinas. This is just DIY paint, so there's no sealer in it. I don't have to worry about my brush damaging if it gets dry because especially when I'm working outside and I go ahead and I take a white rag and I just remove the excess because it's soaking up into that raw wood it's just leaving a really nice stain and you could stain your furniture with any of the DIY paint colors and then seal it and you would have a beautiful beautiful product I was using weathered wood and weathered wood is deceiving. It's really dark when it's wet, but then it grays out when it dries. This is actually beautiful. I could have left it like that, but I ended up 
doing something a little bit different for my finish. I wasn't sure what I was going to do there on the inside. Originally, I thought I was going to paint it black, but I went ahead and I took the weathered wood. I put a little bit of old school into the jar, and then I went ahead and I painted it on. For the bottom half of the table, I'm using what we call DIY lab colors. It's something that the DIY paint warehouse created. It wasn't exactly apothecary, but it's very, very close to apothecary. And I have several colors that I got last year from DIY paint. I, and I was like, I really need to use this paint. And the color was beautiful. But again, you could use apothecary if you want to do something similar on a piece of furniture. And so I just applied that everywhere. I sealed my decoupage paper with DIY Paints Liquid Patina, but you could also use Big Top. You can even decoupage with Big Top. I have several decoupage videos. I have a playlist that you could click here and you can watch any of them if you want more instruction. Or if you have any questions about it, please feel free to comment below and let me know. I would love to help you be able to decoupage and feel comfortable doing it. Again, I could have taken my furniture on the top and sealed it with Big Topper wax and it would have turned out great. I decided to use Dark and Decrepit on the top just to add more richness and I do really like the way that it turned out because of the colors that were inside of the paper. I just kind of wanted to tie it all in and have a more masculine piece of furniture because usually I get accused of doing very girly furniture pieces with florals and the colors and so I was on a a quest to go ahead and do something dark academia more masculine and I really hit the nail on the head tell me what you think when you watch the entire video and how it turned out comment below and let me know I take my dark and decrepit and I go ahead and I apply it to that inset area and where the like shell area is just to tie it all in together. Those, are those areas where I cut it too short and some of the wood was showing, I go ahead and I apply the dark and decrepit all over those sides and it just helps to tie it in it helps to grunge up the paper even more and I love that way that it looked I'm going to apply several colors on top of this color to create my finish. I'm using prairie gray right there that's nice and chunky, which I'll add some water to thin it down. And then DIY Paints Faded Burlap. These are both beautiful neutral colors. They're perfect for washes to tone down something that maybe is too colorful. I've used faded burlap on many pieces in this way. And so I'm doing faded burlap first and I am applying water to make sure that it's a thin coat and it's not perfect coverage I'm just putting it all over and in random places not the same in every area uh, just to give it a worn 
look that's something that's been painted over time. Next, I do the same thing with Prairie Gray and I just get the paint all over on top of faded burlap. Then I took weathered wood with a little bit of old school and I applied it really thinly over everything that I had just painted. And because I had done really thin layers, it really dried very quickly and I was outside as well. I take a blue shop towel, you could also use newspaper, and I apply it on there, rubbing my hand over it and removing some of the paint. It gives it such a really cool modeled effect. It takes up some of the paint. You could see all of the layers underneath. I love to do this technique. It just came out so beautiful. I had to take a quick little break from painting because the critters came by to visit. Little do they know we had a surprise for them, especially her, Tintin. She loves all the animals and we had just gotten a little calf. She was so excited and so she decided that she wanted to help Poppy feed her. Actually, it's a him. And then of course we had to stop by and see all of the goats and our mini donkey, the chickens and all of the other animals that we have. It's always exciting here, but we've got to get back to painting. So I was finished with um, painting everything and so I took my DIY clear wax and I applied a coat of clear wax on the bottom and I let it dry for at least an hour. Then I applied Big Top on the top using my blue applicator sponge, which I do have available on my website. It just makes it so easy. And I sealed it all over. I ended up doing three coats of Big Top on the top. Then for my second coat, I went ahead and I applied clear wax and then I did DIY Paints Black Wax. You always want to do your colored wax immediately after a coat of clear wax because it gives you the ability to be able to have control and wipe back any excess that you have. But the black wax just gives it it's just punch and depth and detail, a little bit of grunge, and it just comes out looking so good. It's just like adding a drop shadow to a font when you're doing graphic design. It just brings out the detail and gives it that interesting character. A little bit really makes a huge difference. I usually try to take a really nice picture on a blank wall and do some video of the final piece to reveal it, how it turned out, but I had to do this very, very quickly because at the end of this short little clip, I'm going to show you what I was doing. We had to quickly turn this around because I started a new venture in Henderson, Kentucky. And if you stay tuned, you can watch the video. But please don't forget to like this video, comment below, and let me know what you thought about it. So here is the new adventure. In Henderson, Kentucky, there is a vendor outlet. It's a peddler's mall. And I had struggled with this for months. Do I open up a new booth because I need to get rid of some stuff? Do I uh, do it in Madisonville? Do I do it somewhere else? And so finally they had an opening. Um, and I was able to turn this around very, very quickly, literally in just a couple of days, I called and I was able to come down there and set up. It's not the vendor mall that I would have um, loved to be a part of, to be honest with you, 
but it's turned out to be really well. The people are very, very nice. One of the vendors, previous vendors, ended up buying it and has made a lot of changes to it. And there's a lot of vendors in here. It's 36,000 square feet and they have a variety of vendors and he made room for me to have two different booths here. And so I convinced my husband to help me. We have this little peg wall right here, which was really great. And so we loaded everything that I could into my enclosed trailer and into my car as much as we could take. And we loaded up the space. Even the vendor was like, there's no way she's going to fill this space. She's bringing too much stuff. But we made it work. My booth looks totally different from everybody else's and um, slowly but surely we got it together. That table is the one that I did a couple of weeks ago here. I, that cabinet had never sold, so I brought it over there. I was hesitant to take painted furniture because when I had booth space in the past, people would damage my furniture. And I thought, well, I'm gonna try it and see what happens. I've got to get rid of things I've overwhelmed. I have so many things in my house, in my building, in my trailer. And quite honestly, at now and then, we aren't, I'm not selling that much. Um, so I just took a leap of faith and I started this in Henderson. Like I said, I'll have the information below. So if you're ever in the area, I would love for you to stop in. I did a huge Christmas display. This is October and I was the first one to do Christmas and the owner was really glad about it. He, he thought that was a great idea. So I pulled out things that I've had in my house that I don't no longer want and I set up a whole area and my husband helped me so I'm very grateful to him for his help because he took time off of work to help me. I brought in all of the extra things that I had acquired from that house that where I got the table and a couple of other items and all those little knickknacks. I brought them out there. We'll see how they do. I also put a lot of pieces that uh, a furniture that were unpainted. So I've never done that before. I want to see if those sell. So this is the finished look all set up on day one. So right off the bat, we sold the table. I was so excited. So Ari and I came back, we brought that dresser and we brought a few more things just to fill it up. I'm really excited to start off the bat with such a great sale. So we're gonna go ahead and set up. Ari and I stopped at Now and Then which is 575 McCoy Avenue. If you're in the area, come and see me. That's where I am every Wednesday from 10 to 4, and I can meet you at any time if you're ever in the area, um, even when we're not open. But I pulled some stuff that I had in the store that hadn't sold or just that I wanted to change things around and add some more pretty things in my booth here in Henderson, and so it worked out really well. Here is the walkthrough of booth 927. Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. <laughs> 
we shop at booth 927.